Welcome to Lord and Richards Radio, a program that will enable you to become more financially independent and prosperous from a biblical point of view. Tune in each week to learn how to prosper through good markets and bad. Now, here's our host, Colin Richards, Denver's Biblical Investment Advisor. Hi, friends. I'm glad to be with you today on Lord and Richards Radio. I'm Colin Richards founder and president of Lord & Richards. We're a team of advisors who are dedicated to helping people just like you retire financially independent. And we're doing that every single day. On this show, we're discussing investing and planning from the perspective of key biblical principles, a little bit different way of looking at money. We also talk about how to use methods and strategies that will enable you to prosper through both up and down markets. And that's so important in today's volatile world. I'd love to chat with you. My team and I would love to help you talk to you about your specific questions regarding retirement and saving and investing from a biblical point of view. Just pick up the phone and give us a call at 720-592-1040. Again, that's 720-592-1040. I'd love to chat with you about how you can achieve financial independence from a biblical viewpoint. Or check us out online at lordandrichards.com. Hey folks, Colin Richards here. I'm president and founder of Lord & Richards, and I'm excited to be with you today on this episode of the Lord & Richards Show. And in this particular episode, we're going to be talking about the Bible's teaching concerning giving from 2 Corinthians 8. As you know, here on the Lord & Richards Show, we're talking to you about the problems that retirees and pre-retirees face. And you know, the conversations I'm having every single day are telling me, you know what, we need to be prepared financially for our future. But a big part of that is the blessing of God on your life. Uh, We we really believe at Lord & Richards that the blessing of the Lord makes rich, and he adds no sorrow with it, that there is a kind of wealth that comes from God when we are generous back towards him. And so in 2 Corinthians 8, Paul is going to commend an especially giving group of churches, a wonderful group of people. Listen to what he says to the Corinthian Christians about the Macedonian Christians. We want you to know, brothers, about the grace of God that has been given among the churches of Macedonia. For in a severe test of affliction, their abundance of joy and their extreme poverty have overflowed in a wealth of generosity on their part. For they gave according to their means, as I can testify, and beyond their means, of their own accord, begging us earnestly for the favor of taking part in the relief of the saints. And this, not as we expected, but they gave themselves first to the Lord, and then by the will of God to us. Wow, what a group of people. The the occasion is the relief of the saints in Jerusalem. Not only were the saints in Jerusalem being persecuted, but it well may have been related also to a famine that they were experiencing in Judea. And so the church was facing a great test in Jerusalem. And Paul, knowing that he had had opportunity to plant and to build and to be a part of the growth of many of the Gentile churches or the churches in other parts of the Roman Empire, decided this would be a great opportunity for those churches to give towards this need. And besides that, Paul also wanted to see the Jewish uh, community in Jerusalem bound together with their Gentile counterparts, other believers elsewhere. So of the people that, that Paul ministered to across the Roman Empire, he identifies this as a group that was in a severe test of affliction. These were some of the poorest Christians in the Roman Empire. They themselves could probably have used love gifts from other believers around the world. And yet Paul tells us that they were the ones wanting to give. He he didn't even have to ask. And he said, you know, they they were the ones who jumped in and begged us for the favor. Their attitude was the grace of God. Notice it says the grace of God given to these churches. You know, when you have an attitude of gratitude that comes from God, it spills over in giving to others. This particular passage has to do with giving to others, but we're really told that they gave themselves to the Lord. So it wasn't just that their their money or their possessions were being used to relieve saints, but this was considered by God as a gift to himself. 
Jesus said, if we offer just a cup of cold water in his name, it's like we gave it to him. And so Paul gives this wonderful uh, account of the generosity and the grace of this group. He describes them as being abundantly joyful in it. Think about it. If you're in need yourself, is it an exciting prospect to give away what you have when you yourself are in need? That's how they took it. They begged for the favor. In other words, the grace. They wanted this. They considered this to be something they could do for God, the favor or grace of God. And they begged to do it. And they began, they started with what they could give according to their means, but they just caught fire. And it says they went beyond their means. They gave themselves, and that resulted in God being able to lead them along in the area of giving. Now, let me ask you a couple questions. First of all, if you're among the poor, if you're among those who aren't rich, let's say, should you be giving? You know, a lot of times people feel that, well, until I'm really financially in a better place, I don't think God would expect me to give. I, I think he does, because there's always those who are struggling more than you and being generous with what you have no matter where you are in life. And your generosity may look entirely different from somebody else's. Someone has wisely said, it's not so much what you give that counts in the eyes of God, it's what's left after you give. Consider the the story of the widow who cast in her might. They say it was a big funnel that made noise there at the temple where people would give, and a lot of times the wealthy would come in and you would just hear this huge rush of metal on metal, and then all of a sudden the Lord is arrested by the sound of just plunk, one might, the smallest amount of currency. And yet he said, this woman, though she gave the smallest amount of currency, has given more than them all because she gave sacrificially. So the answer is, yeah, we should give, even if we're not as rich as somebody else, if we consider ourselves poor. But you know, I've never seen the righteous forsaken or a seed begging bread. That's right out of the Word of God. And I don't believe God is going to leave you in a place where you're begging. You know what I find? In our lesson last time, we learned from our own Lord's own words about giving to your own enemies that it will be given back to you with the same measure that you give, it's going to be given back to you. And so as we consider financial independence, which is a big theme at Lord & Richards, it's our word for retirement, being able to do the things that you love with the people that you love for the glory of God and to do amazing things with the resources he's entrusted to you. These are the kinds of amazing things we're talking about, and it doesn't have to wait until you quit your day job. As a matter of fact, if you would like God to, to give you the opportunity to do more amazing things, then be faithful what, with what he's already put in your hands and give. Look for needs and opportunities, especially through your church. Uh, for us, for my church uh, that I have the privilege of leading, as well as for our family. Uh, we have made the decision at Lord & Richards, our family, our church, that we're going to focus a lot of attention, time, and effort at the most unreached people in the world, some of the poorest of the poor. So we do a lot of work in Southeast Asia and Myanmar and India, where we built schools for the poor, where we have provided medical and financial relief. We have built um, buildings and facilities but all that was done not just for those people, but it was given to the Lord. And so perhaps God would lay on your heart someone whose need might be greater than yours. Let God make you a conduit, a blessing. Well, as part of an overall plan, giving is important, but there sure is more that goes into it. And at Lord & Richards, we help you build a comprehensive plan so that you can retire without worry, financially independent, and be a great steward of what God has entrusted to you. I would love to chat with you. I'd love to visit with you and talk to you more. It just starts with a simple phone call. Just pick up the phone and give us a call at 720-592-1040. Again, that's 720-592-1040. I'd love to chat with you about how you can achieve financial independence from a biblical viewpoint. Or check us out online at lordandrichards.com. Hey folks, this is Colin Richards, president and founder of Lord & Richards, and I'm excited to be talking to you in this segment of the Lord & Richards show about what's happening to the banks. And I could really put that in a question. What is happening to the banks? 
Uh, this is one I've gotten a lot of questions about. And as a matter of fact, at Lord & Richards, we, of course, communicate proactively with our clients and have sent out communication about our thoughts on this. And I'd like to share our thoughts with you in case perhaps uh, nobody's really talking to you about this uh, who's also looking out for your best interest. You know, at Lord & Richards, I'm talking to people every single day who are concerned that events like what happened to our banks, events like what's been happening in the markets, in politics, in geopolitical conflicts and wars, they're concerned that these kinds of events are going to mess up their retirement. And I know probably many of you are as well. And so what I want to do is help you understand the critical importance of building a plan in advance. Okay, now you say, well, we're in the middle of of various crises. Is it too late? No, it's never too late. But how much more important now, seeing the dangers that are out there to build a plan so you can be financially independent, creating a kind of economic bubble around you and your retirement so you can do amazing things with the resources God has put at your disposal. And so today we're talking about the recent failure of two banks, two banks that were seized by regulators. Uh, Last week we had Silicon Valley Bank, the nation's 16th largest bank, seized. It was declared insolvent after it couldn't satisfy withdrawals by depositors on last Thursday and Friday. And of course, this was a result of a number of things. Um, We also saw Signature Bank then follow because of its exposure to um, some of the uh, issues that were related to Silicon Valley Bank. Silicon Valley Bank lent to a lot of startups, venture capitalists, tech companies. And these tech companies, startups, venture capitalists, relied upon... um, the ability to finance their operations. And guess what the government's been doing to the ability of businesses to finance? Well, in order to slow down our rate of inflation, which, by the way, is only a bad thing, uh, pardon me, uh, their solution of raising interest rates is only a bad thing if you're borrowing money, right? So the government started raising interest rates to slow down the rate of inflation, thus negatively affecting borrowers. Now, people like the clients at Lord & Richards, we're benefiting from the rise of interest rates. We're teaching our clients how to use high interest rates right now to really benefit and to lock in some really great long-term benefits in their portfolio. But for these borrowers, they had to turn to what they had, which was the cash in the bank, in order to keep operations going as the government uh, started to tighten the ability of businesses to expand through lending. And so that meant Banks like Silicon Valley got really shortchanged, right, as people pulled out their money to take care of their bills and their payroll. The bank then had to turn around in order to satisfy those deposits and sell many of its low-yielding treasuries. And those treasuries have dropped in value, right? Because if you've got some old, ratty old, low-interest um, treasury and now the government's paying more interest, you've got to pay you got to offer a, a, a premium to potential buyers so that they'll take that off your hands, right? So often losing as much as 25% or more on those investments just to satisfy the needs of these companies who had to pull their money out. They also tried to raise cash by selling stock, and that backfired, <laughs> watching their stock value drop because, of course, people are saying, what is going on? So they had to do the selling, and therefore... Other depositors then began to lose confidence and withdrew their funds, causing the bank to fail. It's literally a scene out of It's a Wonderful Life with Jimmy Stewart. Now, bear in mind that the FDIC insures deposits up to 250000 but many of these customers were businesses that had much more than that. Now, the government has come in and said, we're going to waive that. And we're going to make sure everybody gets their money. And the government's done that in order to instill confidence because what the government is trying to do is stop a run on otherwise healthy banks because depositors get emotional. And this just happens, right? And if you're out there fanning the flames of emotion, you're literally doing your neighbor a disservice, right? Because the bank that they're in may may suffer because you're inflating or politicizing what is going on. This really just has to do with simple economics. Simple economics. You can blame the government, you can blame Biden, you can blame anybody, but when the government raises rates to cool inflation, this kind of stuff happens. You say, well, they shouldn't raise rates. Well, 
then take a look at what happens to your household budget when your wages don't keep up with your cost of living because inflation is growing at a faster rate than your budget okay, or than your income. So as a result of the exposure that Sig Signature Bank had in New York, uh, regulators also seized them and they plan to make them whole as well. So we're all good, right? All good. Well, the question really is, okay, this exposes the vulnerability, the vulnerability of our deposits at banks. And yes, we should work within the FDIC insurance limits when possible, and there are creative ways to do that. But in our next segment, we're going to talk about alternatives to banks, alternatives to banks for investments, because many people are just parking money in the bank because they don't know what to do with it. And we've got a lot better idea about how to do that and how to approach that safely, right? Because we put our money in the banks to get safe. Generally, we're not looking for great growth. Do we have a larger banking crisis on hand? We don't know. We don't think so, but we're going to stay tuned on that. Uh, but markets don't like negative headlines, so people are also seeing a lot of instability in the, in the uh, stock market. Right, as people are concerned, bank stocks, whether they're involved or not, are getting cratered by investors. And so we need to keep an eye on that, right? And that that again heightens the need to say, well, what what else can I do besides put my money in the bank to protect me from all of this volatility going on in the markets and our financial system? Well, what we can do is we can look to other safe places to put our money that have traditionally provided investors opportunity for growth but safety at the same time. If you'd like to talk to me about how we can do that, we can visit together. It starts with a simple phone call where we walk you through our process called a financial independence review. I'd love to chat. Just pick up the phone and give us a call at 720-592-1040. Again, that's 720-592-1040. I'd love to chat with you about how you can achieve financial independence from a biblical viewpoint. Or check us out online at lordandrichards.com. Hey folks, Colin Richards here. I'm president and founder of Lord & Richards, and I'm excited to be with you again today on this episode of the Lord & Richards Show. And as you know, at Lord & Richards, we are focused on helping our clients become financially independent from a biblical point of view. And so what we do is we help you build a written plan by the way, plans that aren't written down have a pretty likely low likelihood of success. And we help you build a written plan to achieve financial independence, addressing market risk, the instability and volatility in our world today, addressing the possibility that money could run out if it's not planned in advance, addressing the significant health care costs that people are facing today in retirement, addressing tax and legacy concerns, all of this critical so that you can retire with peace of mind. And we do all that so that you can have an amazing retirement and do wonderful things with the resources God has put at your disposal. Well, one of the challenges we've faced recently here is the issue of bank insolvency. And as we discussed in a previous segment, what is happening in the banks, we pointed out, yeah, there are weaknesses. Banks are required to have what's called a, a, a fractional reserve, right? So they don't have to have all the money ready to hand out and maintain solvency. They don't have to do that. Often a very small fraction of that money is available. And when they're forced to liquidate assets because of a loss of confidence, then the bank can fail, right? Because they could lose money. Well, there's also FDIC insurance, but remember, there's limits on that, limits on FDIC insurance. So where can we really go for safety? You know, we rely on our banks to be safe places for money, but the events recently have reminded us, you know, there's not a perfect solution in banks. Well, there is another solution. There's no such thing as a perfect solution, but I think an even better solution, and that is on the insurance side of the finance world. First of all, insurance companies control far more money than banks. <laughs> it's told anecdotally that during the Great Depression, it was the banks who drove up to the back doors of, uh, pardon me, it was insurance companies who drove up to the back doors of banks to bail them out, to keep them floating. And insurance companies are known as having a lot of cash. Why? Because they're used to having to pay it out. And so the government requires them 
And by the way, they're regulated a little bit more uh, closely at the state level, at the state level. So the government requires them to keep what are called legal reserves, legal reserves. That means that very often instead of a fraction of the money, they actually have to have assets valued at quite a bit more than what they would have to pay out if they had to pay out everything. So that's quite a, a quite an encouragement. So when using insurance and annuities as part of a retirement plan, recognize that we are we are relying primarily upon the strength of that carrier, the claims paying ability of the carrier. And um, we want to make sure we're working with highly rated carriers, right? And so the rate of failure of insurance companies is is significantly lower than banks. And we recommend also recognizing that the states offer additional protection, additional protection. So when you incorporate investment type insurance products or investment type annuity products, you're coming underneath the protection of what's called the State Guarantee Association. Now, those limits are set by account and by the states, but they're worth looking up and knowing. Beyond that, there's also the deposits that you keep at a brokerage and recognize that the brokerage system has its own version of protection. It's called the Securities Investor Protection Corporation, a nonprofit corporation mandated by the government, and they cover up to 500000 in securities, up to 250000 in uninvested cash. So there's a lot of protected places to put your money. But here's the thing. When we're designing your portfolio so that you can retire financially independent, one of the major reasons we're going to not just use banks is because the purpose of money should dictate where you put it. Where should you put money that you need for short-term expenses? Well, that sounds like the bank, right? We recommend maybe a three- to six-month cash reserve there at the bank, and that's it. Going beyond that, now we want to have some additional liquid money that we can get to if we need to, uh, maybe as much as 30 to 40% of our money in investments that can grow. But don't leave those naked in the market because the big issue there is not can I grow? The big issue is can I keep my past growth, right? Because markets are volatile, especially right now. So not putting everything there. And then finally, having a significant portion of your retirement literally insured. If you talk to the most um, knowledgeable People in risk management today, they'll tell you, look, if you want to manage risk, nobody does that like fixed annuity and fixed life insurance companies. So you can literally invest under their umbrella of protection, under their umbrella of safety, and build moderate to sometimes significant growth in the value of your portfolio. You say, well, aren't there drawbacks and aren't there issues with those kinds of investments? There are with every single kind. Typically, when we're talking about banks, the issue is not much growth. When we're talking about brokerage accounts, where the issue is safety and making sure we have what we call at Lord & Richards institutional risk management, managing risk like an institution would, not like a fly-by-night investment firm. And then third and finally, there's an appropriate place for money that you want to use to fund your retirement. Did you realize that you could actually guarantee your retirement? that you don't have to leave it up to the to the whims of our market or the whims of our banking system, that you can actually generate a, a lifetime of income that you can outlive, all while still participating in the growth opportunity of the market. And you can do it safely and without fear. That's part of what we at Lord & Richards call an income plan, a written income plan. And most investors that I'm talking to today have failed to understand the power of that at Lord & Richards. Of course, we're fiduciaries. We're investment advisors. We have uh, certified financial planners on our team. We have certified tax specialists on our team, Series 65 licensed investment advisors on our team, and on and on. And so we want to do what's best for you and what's best for your retirement. And that includes opening our eyes to the full breadth, the banking industry, the brokerage industry, and the assurance and annuity industry, the full breadth of opportunities to make sure not only does your portfolio have the opportunity to grow, not only is it safe and within reasonable boundaries, but also that you have income that is reliable, consistent, and allows you to never have to go back to work again. And so the question, is my money safe? I guess that depends on where you put it. 
If you're going to put it at risk, I suggest let's put it somewhere where it will be institutionally risk managed so that you don't have to worry about it going uh, an unlimited bottom to your investment. Let's put in place special tools that will help reduce or eliminate some of that downside. And then let's have other tools where you're absolutely principal protected. That's where insurance and annuities come in. They can protect your principal and help you lock in gains on autopilot every single year and generate income that you cannot live. Well, this is all part of a comprehensive plan we call a financial independence review. And at Lord & Richard's, we're having discussions with folks like you every single day. And I'd love to chat with you. I'd love to explore your situation and see how we can be of help. It really starts with just a simple phone call and a great conversation. Just pick up the phone and give us a call at 720-592-1040. Again, that's 720-592-1040. I'd love to chat with you about how you can achieve financial independence from a biblical viewpoint. Or check us out online at lordandrichards.com. Investment advisory service is offered only by duly registered individuals through AE Wealth Management, LLC.